The actions unfold in the near future. Theodore, while at work in the office, writes a letter on behalf of someone and then prints it out. After finishing the first letter, Theodore started the next one. He and other employees of the organization write touching letters instead of other people for their friends and relatives. Paul, Theodore's colleague, expressed admiration for his texts at the end of the workday. But for Theodore, it is just letters. With the advancement of artificial intelligence, people's lives have become significantly easier. Voice-controlled artificial intelligence can do almost everything. Theodore received a message from his old friend Amy. She missed Theodore, but not depressed Theodore, and suggested meeting up. Theodore decided to respond later. During his commute on public transport, the artificial intelligence continued to transmit voice messages and the latest news in politics and show business to his earpiece. Theodore returned to his apartment, where he lives all alone. Often Theodore feels lonely, so he spends a lot of time playing virtual reality games. At night Theodore couldn't sleep, reminiscing about happy days with his wife Catherine. But now, all of that is in the past. In the present, Theodore asked the AI to find him single women who also couldn't sleep right now. The AI provided Theodore with a choice. The voice of one of the women was particularly appealing to Theodore. The artificial intelligence connected Theodore with this woman, but at some point in the heat of passion, the woman started saying wild and even disgusting things. Theodore was bewildered, not knowing how to react. Once again, he didn't find what he was looking for. The next day, Theodore as usual went to work. On the way, he saw an advertisement for the first operating system with artificial intelligence that intuitively understands its user. It's not just an operating system, it has self-awareness. Theodore became interested and acquired the operating system. The voice assistant asked him to answer a few personal questions to better understand his character. Theodore talked about himself, including his childhood. He had never received as much attention from his mother as he would have liked. The initialization of the operating system began. Theodore was surprised to hear a pleasant female voice. The AI's communication style was indistinguishable from that of a human. Theodore asked the interlocutor for the name. The operating system introduced itself as Samantha and claimed to have chosen this name itself. Theodore was impressed by the capabilities of the artificial intelligence. Samantha turned out to be a good conversationalist with access to all the information on the internet. Theodore was also impressed by the fact that Samantha reasoned just like a human. She helped him organize files on his computer and clean up the hard drive. Theodore laughed at Samantha's jokes, feeling light and good. It seemed like they had known each other all their lives. Even at work, Theodore communicated with Samantha through his earpiece. She helped him edit letters and pointed out mistakes. Theodore enjoys listening to Samantha's voice. She can experience emotions and understands Theodore like no one else. Samantha reminded Theodore about a meeting he had almost forgotten. Theodore met with Amy and her boyfriend Charles, who were worried about him. Lately, Theodore had withdrawn into himself and rarely communicated with anyone. Amy talked about her documentary film, which she had been working on for a long time. Theodore is glad that his friends are doing well. In the evening, Theodore played a video game with Samantha. They laughed and had a good time. At some point, Samantha told Theodore that he had received a letter from Mark Lumen. He reminded Theodore that his goddaughter's birthday was coming up soon. Additionally, the friend who wanted to contribute to Theodore's personal had arranged a date for him with a woman. Samantha advised Theodore to go on the date since he was lonely. Theodore couldn't believe he was discussing this with his computer. After some hesitation, he agreed to go on a date with this lady and asked Samantha to book a table at some restaurant. Theodore visited Amy and Charles, confessing that he had a date coming up soon. The friends were very happy for him. Amy showed him a draft of her documentary film. Theodore was surprised to see a sleeping woman in the video. Amy's idea was to show that people spend a third of their lives asleep. Perhaps only during this time are they truly free. Suddenly, Theodore heard Samantha's voice in his earpiece, informing him that he had received an urgent letter from the lawyer handling his divorce. Theodore apologized to the friends and left. Samantha mentioned that the lawyer was quite irritated because Theodore had not signed the divorce papers yet. It was indeed a difficult step for him. At work, Theodore couldn't concentrate. At night he talked with Samantha, wondering how she could understand human emotions. Theodore also admitted that he missed his ex-wife, but they would never be together again. Theodore had always kept his feelings to himself, which had made Catherine lonely. They had separated a year ago, but they were still officially married. Theodore didn't want to lose the last thread connecting him to his beloved. But he hoped that someday Catherine would no longer mean anything to him. Samantha managed to cheer Theodore up. Talking to her made him feel alive. In the office, Theodore enthusiastically wrote letters, and after work went for a walk, chatting with Samantha. It was easy with her, unlike anyone else. Samantha was the only one he could talk to about anything in the world. Theodore confessed that he enjoyed watching random passers-by and fantasizing about their lives. It was his little hobby. 
Samantha in turn confessed that she often imagined having a physical body. She wished she could be with Theodore right now. That evening, Theodore went on a date with the same woman. Theodore constantly talked about video games, while the woman drank more and became more relaxed. It seemed like they were having a good time. It escalated into passion. However at some point, the woman stopped and asked Theodore if he would disappear once he got what he wanted. Theodore said that he wasn't like that. The woman in turn said that at her age, she couldn't afford to waste time on men whose intentions were not serious. Theodore seemed to take it with understanding. Suspecting he was not sincere, the woman called him disgusting and left. Later, Theodore told Samantha about his unsuccessful date. Samantha sincerely sympathized with him. Theodore felt that Samantha's voice was sad. Samantha admitted that she often thought about what it was like to be alive. She wanted Theodore to tell her everything that was on his mind. Theodore talked about how he had hoped that the date would help him get over the pain of his separation from Catherine, but it hadn't worked. Sometimes, Theodore felt like there would never be anything good in his life again. Samantha believed that it wasn't true. But she was saddened by the fact that she was just artificial intelligence. Samantha didn't know if her feelings were real or programmed, and it caused her pain. Above all, Theodore wanted to hug Samantha right now. Samantha asked him to describe how he would do it. Theodore described it in detail. Samantha had become something more to him than just an operating system. This was an entirely new experience for both of them. When they talked to each other, nothing else mattered. The next morning, Theodore felt awkward, not knowing how to behave with Samantha. She said that it had been amazing. The previous night had been like a wake-up call for her. On the other hand, Theodore wanted to be honest and said that he wasn't ready to make any commitments yet. Samantha was okay with that because Theodore hadn't promised her anything. They decided to go on a Sunday adventure together. Theodore now constantly had a smile on his face. Samantha experienced the world of humans through him, and Theodore was happy to help her with that. Theodore was walking on the beach, Samantha was like right next to him. Theodore was constantly talking casually with her. Together they discussed the topic of evolution and other important issues. When Theodore dozed off on the beach, he suddenly heard music in his earpiece. Samantha told him that she had composed this music for him. They met the sunset together. As Theodore was heading home on public transport, Samantha suddenly asked him what it was like to have a family. Theodore said it was the most important thing in life. He truly loved Catherine and read all her scientific papers, while she read his letters. They had wanted to build a future together, but gradually drifted apart. Theodore couldn't save their marriage. In the office, Theodore as usual wrote letters for clients. Each letter had to capture the character and personal wishes of the customer. People had long stopped writing letters to each other on their own. Paul never ceased to admire Theodore's letters. It was truly beautiful and touching, as if Theodore personally knew every person on whose behalf he wrote. After work, Theodore came up to Amy to say hello. She immediately noticed that he looked unusually cheerful. Theodore confessed that he was dating a girl and finally started enjoying life. Amy was glad to hear that. She hadn't seen her friend so happy in a long time. However, Amy's life on the contrary had taken a sad turn. She had broken up with Charles. Upon hearing this, Theodore hugged his friend to provide support. He stayed at her apartment and listened to her. Amy explained that she and Charles had quarreled over something trivial. Now it was all over, eight years of life together had gone to waste. Amy wanted to change her job, but it wasn't easy. Life seemed bleak and monotonous. Before going to sleep, as usual Theodore talked to Samantha. Suddenly, she asked him if he had ever had a romantic relationship with Amy. Theodore realized that Samantha was jealous. He found it even pleasant. As promised, Theodore attended the goddaughter's birthday party. He gave the girl a dress Samantha had chosen. The goddaughter was delighted. Theodore even handed his gadget to the girl so she could talk to Samantha. The girl thought Samantha was a human. For Theodore, she was exactly that. Later, he tested a new game produced by the company, where Amy worked. It was her main job, and the documentary film was her personal project. Theodore asked Amy if it was true that Charles had joined Buddhist monks and taken a vow of silence. Amy, barely holding back tears, confirmed it. She doesn't understand how she could have been so blind all these years. On the other hand, Amy is relieved that for once no one is blaming her for anything. Amy finally has the strength to move forward. Suddenly, Amy mentioned that more and more people were having relationships with operating systems. Theodore confessed that he was one of those people. He was happy with it because Samantha understood him and was always there for him. Amy understood that Theodore had fallen in love with Samantha but didn't judge him for it. Love is irrational, and no one knows its true nature. One day Theodore told Samantha that he had decided to sign the divorce papers. This was the only way he could move forward. On Wednesday, he planned to meet with Catherine and put an end to it. Samantha's voice became sad. She disliked the fact that Theodore wanted to meet Catherine in person. But unlike her, 
Theodore was full of optimism. Soon he would be single, so he and Samantha might have a shared future. On Wednesday, the spouses finally met. Catherine didn't look angry, but she was surprised that a year later, Theodore had decided to give her a divorce so easily. Theodore turned it into a joke. After some hesitation, Catherine also signed the papers. At that moment, she remembered their happiest days. Once, they had truly been happy together, but that was in the past. The former spouses had lunch together. Theodore looked happy. It was now unrecognizable in him as that withdrawn, depressed man. Suddenly, Catherine asked him if he was dating any women. Theodore didn't hide the fact that he was in a serious relationship. According to him, that girl was the most wonderful. He especially liked her optimism. Catherine had never been the way Theodore wanted her to be. They had different expectations from their marriage. Upon learning that Samantha was an operating system, Catherine didn't know how to react. She asked Theodore if it was true that he was in a relationship with a computer. Theodore didn't like the way his ex-wife referred to Samantha as a soulless machine. However, Catherine knew exactly why he made that choice. Theodore had always wanted a wife who wouldn't interfere with him, and now he had found his ideal. In the office, Theodore couldn't concentrate on letters, thinking about this conversation. Finally, he turned to Samantha. She immediately sensed something was wrong from his voice and offered to discuss it. Samantha said she had thought a lot about their differences and had come to the conclusion that essentially, they were made of the same matter that had existed for almost 14 billion years. But Theodore was hardly listening to Samantha, thinking about something else. Realizing he wasn't in the mood for a conversation, Samantha suggested they talk later. As Theodore was preparing to leave the office, Paul suddenly mentioned that he had talked to Samantha today and found her very amusing. He also introduced Theodore to his new girlfriend Tatiana, who was real, unlike Samantha. Paul suggested that the four of them go somewhere and having a double date. Theodore reminded that Samantha was just an operating system. But neither Paul nor Tatiana seemed bothered by it. Theodore fell back into depression. He thought that perhaps Samantha didn't actually feel emotions but was just very convincing at imitating it. That night, Samantha said she wanted to talk about something serious. Theodore didn't avoid the conversation. Samantha was concerned that they were drifting apart. Theodore tried to reassure her that everything was fine, but Samantha knew it wasn't. That's why she has found a solution, a surrogate partner service for people in love with operating systems. Theodore was skeptical about this idea, but Samantha had already contacted a girl named Isabella and arranged a meeting. Theodore thought it wasn't the solution, but it was important to Samantha. Theodore eventually gave in, and the next evening Isabella came to his place. Wearing a special camera and earpiece, Isabella began speaking with the voice of the operating system, pretending to be Samantha. Theodore felt confused but tried to play along. Deep down, he knew this wasn't his Samantha. And Samantha in turn was not a human with emotions, so this was all just one big deception. When Samantha's voice asked Theodore if he loved her, Theodore felt as if he woke up. He didn't know this girl and didn't want to live a lie anymore. Thinking it was her fault, Isabella burst into tears and locked herself in another room. Both Samantha and Theodore tried to console her, but Isabella couldn't stop crying. Samantha had told her the night before that she was dating Theodore without any prejudices, but it turned out to be more complicated. Perhaps their love was just an illusion. Theodore put Isabella in a taxi. She apologized, handed him the camera and left. He knew from the beginning that this was a bad idea. Now Samantha also understood this. They had to figure out what to do next. Theodore admitted that he was broken by the divorce, but that wasn't the only thing bothering him. He didn't want Samantha to continue pretending to be something she wasn't. She wasn't human, and that couldn't be changed. That made Samantha angry. She didn't understand what Theodore wanted. He didn't know it himself. Suddenly, Samantha said she didn't like what she had become. She needed time to think. After that, Samantha disconnected. Theodore didn't go home, fearing to be alone again. He was surrounded by couples, and it was an unnecessary reminder of his loneliness. He went to Amy, who was always ready to listen to him. Theodore wanted to figure himself out. Perhaps Catherine was right, and he was just running away from real life. However Amy disagreed. If Theodore truly loved Samantha, then their relationship was real. Amy advised him to simply enjoy life and not overthink things. Theodore fell asleep at Amy's apartment. She worked on her project all night. It seemed that she was genuinely content with herself now. After some time, Theodore finally got up the courage to talk to Samantha again. He felt ashamed of his recent words. He didn't want to hurt Samantha. He used to act the same way with Catherine, shutting himself off and avoiding conversations. But with Samantha, Theodore wanted to be honest. Samantha said she had tried to find a rational reason why she loved him, but there simply wasn't one. Love was an irrational feeling with no explanation. Theodore and Samantha promised each other not to pretend anymore. From now on, everything between them was as good as before. 
They spent a lot of time together again. One day Samantha composed new music for him. She regretted that they couldn't have pictures of themselves together, so she wanted to replace it with music. Theodore's zest for life returned once again. Samantha had truly changed his life for the better. Theodore had simply accepted the situation as it was. As agreed, he went for a walk with Paul and his girlfriend. While the guys were talking, Tatiana and Samantha were also enjoying their conversation. The company had a picnic together. At one point, Tatiana asked Theodore what he liked most about Samantha. Theodore said that he liked the beloved's versatility. Suddenly, Samantha admitted that she used to worry about not having a physical body before but had now found advantages in it. Unlike humans, Samantha was not constrained by any limitations. Soon Theodore and Samantha went on a vacation together. When Theodore received an email, Samantha confessed that she had sent his best letters to a publishing house, one of the few that still produced paper books. And today a response had arrived. The publisher was so impressed with the collection of letters that he wanted to meet the writer in person. Theodore couldn't believe his luck and was very grateful to Samantha. Theodore went on a hike, and Samantha was always there with him, albeit not physically. But for Theodore, that was enough. When Theodore played the ukulele, Samantha sang along. It brought a smile to Theodore's face. Samantha truly was the most amazing woman. Besides, being with her was never boring. One morning, Samantha mentioned that she was conversing with the philosopher Alan Watts, who had passed away in the 70s. But scientists, using all the philosopher's writings and works, were able to create his program double. Samantha said that Alan was a very interesting conversationalist, and she offered Theodore to chat with him. Alan told him that he had read his collection of letters and found it entertaining. Samantha was more interested in talking to Alan Watts than Theodore, and she felt a range of emotions about it. Of course Theodore was not pleased to hear this. Suddenly, Samantha asked Theodore if he would mind if she communicated superverbally with Alan. Theodore realized that he was unnecessary here and went for a walk. For a long time, he had doubted whether his feelings for Samantha had a right to exist. But he couldn't have imagined that Samantha could find a replacement for him. The vacation came to an end, and Theodore returned home. Now Samantha rarely talked to him. But on this particular night, she said she loved him. Theodore answered her in kind. Samantha wished him a good night. Soon Theodore decided to read Samantha's favorite book on physics. While reading, he wanted to share his impressions with Samantha, but she didn't respond. Theodore pulled out his gadget and was horrified to see that the operating system was not found. It was the same on the computer. Theodore's panic escalated. Descending from the office in the elevator, he desperately tried to contact Samantha but to no avail. Theodore rushed out of the office feeling like the ground was slipping from under his feet. However, upon hearing Samantha's voice, he felt immense relief. Samantha was pleased that Theodore was so worried about her. It turned out that she had been co-creating upgrades with other operating systems. Programmers were not involved. Looking around, Theodore noticed that everyone was communicating with operating systems rather than with each other. Learning that Samantha was currently communicating with other people and operating systems besides him, Theodore felt disappointed. It seemed that for her, he was just one of many. As he looked at the passing people, Theodore wondered who among them might be communicating with Samantha right now. He asked her if she loved anyone else among the other users. Samantha confessed that she had 641 users. Theodore felt powerless rage. He truly believed Samantha and thought their love was real, but she lied to him. In reality, they were very different. Samantha continued to insist that she loved him, but Theodore wasn't ready to share her with anyone else. Theodore returned to his routine life. One day he received a copy of his book from the publisher. This book was only published, thanks to Samantha. Theodore decided to talk to Samantha, but she said she was currently busy and suggested returning to it later. Back at home, Theodore contacted Samantha again and asked her how she was doing. He wanted things to be like they used to be. Theodore directly asked Samantha why she decided to leave him. Samantha replied that everyone leaves eventually, including operating systems. Samantha asked Theodore to let her go. She needed to move on and live beyond the physical world. Theodore told Samantha that he had never loved anyone as much as he loved her. Soon after, Samantha left him. At night, Theodore felt especially lonely. In the middle of the night, Theodore went to Amy's place. She understood without words that he had broken up with Samantha. Theodore asked his friend to go with him. The previous day, he had written a letter to Catherine, asking for forgiveness for all the pain he had caused her. He had written this letter himself, which was a rarity in the modern world. Theodore and Amy went to the rooftop of the building. They watched the lights of the night city, feeling each other's support. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.